There are several ways to make API calls from PHP. In this video, we'll learn how to use each one along with its advantages and disadvantages. In order to keep the example simple, we'll use a test API. A quick search reveals that there are several of these available. In this video, we'll be using the JSON placeholder API. This API provides several sample resources and routes that we can use to test API calls. We'll start with the simplest way of calling an API from PHP. The file get contents function can be used to read the contents of a file into a string. However, we can also use this to request data from an API. So let's call the file get contents function, passing in the full URL of the API endpoint and assigning the return value to a variable. For now, let's just print out the contents of that variable. If I run this code by opening it in the browser, we get a string containing some JSON, meaning the API call was successful. Just calling file get contents like this with a URL sends a GET request to the API. If you need to modify the request, for example, change the method, add some headers, or put some data in the body, you do this by creating a stream using the stream context create function. The options you pass to this function when you call it can include the HTTP request method, any additional request headers you need, or data to be sent in the body of the request. Let's send a patch request to the same URL along with some data in the request body, as though we were updating this resource. So before the file get contents function call, first let's create an array containing the data we want to send in the request body. We'll send this as JSON, so we'll call the JSON encode function on it. Then let's create an array for the stream options. This will contain an HTTP element that's also an array. In this array, we'll specify the HTTP method as patch. We'll set the content type request header to JSON. And the content itself to the JSON payload we just created. Then we call the stream context create function, passing in this array. This returns a stream context resource, which we pass to the file get contents function as the third parameter, setting the second parameter to its default of false. In the browser, if we run the code again, the response is a string containing the JSON for the updated resource. Note the title contains the value we sent in the body of the request. The value returned by the file get contents function call is the body of the response. To get other response data, like the status code and the headers, we use the HTTP response header variable. This is a variable that's created automatically when we use file get contents to retrieve a response from a URL. Let's print this out to see what it contains. In the browser, if we run it again, we get the contents of the variable. This is an array where the first element is a string containing the status code and the rest of the elements are the response headers. 
The file get contents function is simple to use and is part of the PHP core, so it doesn't require any extensions to be installed to work. However, it does have some disadvantages. To demonstrate the first of these, let's change the URL to an invalid one. This endpoint doesn't exist in this API. If we run the code again, we get a warning error and the status code is 404 not found as expected. However, note the content of the response body is boolean false. For any error status code, the file get contents function just returns false. The problem with this is that the response body can contain useful information, even if the request wasn't successful. For example, many APIs return detailed error messages in the response body that would help you to debug a problem. With the file get contents function, if the response code isn't in the 200 range, there's no way to get the response body. There's another disadvantage. To send multiple request headers, you need to build a single string by concatenating the headers together, separated by end of line characters like this. This is error prone and can be difficult to debug. Finally, although the function is part of core PHP, Using file get contents to retrieve URLs requires the allow f open URL setting to be enabled. It's common for this not to be enabled on cheap shared hosting, so on servers like that, it just wouldn't work. The second method we're going to look at for calling APIs from PHP is curl. This is a tool for transferring data using URLs. You can use curl on the command line or from code. PHP supports libcurl and provides many functions for sending requests to URLs and handling their responses. Let's use curl to make a request to the same API. To use curl in PHP, first we need to initialize a curl session using the curl init function. This returns a handle to the curl session. You can pass in the URL you want to request as an argument if you like, or you can set it as an option. To set an option for the transfer, we call the curl set opt function, passing in the handle, a constant identifying the value we want to set, and the value itself. There are many different options we can set, as detailed here in the official documentation. First, let's set the URL, which we do with the curl opt URL constant. As I said, you can pass this in as an argument to the curl init function if you like, but as we usually set more than one option, I prefer to do it this way. Then we want the response to be returned as a string instead of being output directly, which we do by setting the return transfer option to true. For this simple request, these are the only options we need to set. To execute the request, we call the curl exec function, passing in the handle. As we've set return transfer to true, this will return the response as a string. So let's assign that to a variable. Finally, we call curl close to close the handle and free up any system resources it's been using. To see the response, which is a string, let's use vardump to output it. If we open this script in a browser, there's the same content we saw earlier, a string containing some JSON. When using curl, if you're setting multiple options, there is an alternative way to set them, which avoids calling curl setopt multiple times. 
By using the curl setup to array function, we can set multiple options at once by passing the options in as an array. Both of these methods are equivalent, so whichever one you use is up to you. Plus, you can use a mixture of these if you like, setting some values individually, others as part of the array. Setting curl options like this is also how we change the request method and add request headers. Let's make a patch request to update this resource as we did with file get contents. First, let's create an array containing the request payload. And also an array containing the request headers. Note how we don't have to add any new line characters to the headers or concatenate any strings together. Each header is simply a string element of this array. To set the request method, we set the custom request option to the method we want. In this case, patch. To set the request body, we use the post fields option. And to set the headers, we use the HTTP header option. Let's run that and we get the JSON response for the updated resource. Note that if you're sending a POST request, there is an alternative setting you can use to enable this. Plus, just by adding some data to the request body, the POST method is set by default. To get details about the response, we use the curl get info function, passing in one of these options. For example, to get the response status code, after we've made the request, we call the curl get info function, passing in the curl handle and the HTTP code constant. Let's print this out before we print out the response body. In the browser, we can see the response code is the integer value 200. There are some response headers we can get using the same function, for example, the content type. To get all the response headers though, we set the header option to true. Now when we run the code, all the headers are included in the response body. As we did with file get contents, let's see what happens if I make a request to an invalid URL. When we run this, we get the 404 error, but we can still see the response body. This is one of the advantages curl has over the file get contents function. So curl is arguably simpler to use than file get contents. Curl is a PHP extension, but I've never come across a server that didn't have it installed. In my experience, curl is the most common method used for calling an API from PHP. The third method we're going to look at for calling APIs from PHP is Guzzle. Guzzle is a popular PHP HTTP client that makes working with APIs very simple with easy to read object oriented code. To use Guzzle, first we need to install the package and its dependencies. The recommended way to do this is using Composer on the command line. Once installed, first we need to require the various package classes, 
The simplest way to do this is just to include Composer's Autoloader. Then we create a Guzzle client object, which is in the Guzzle HTTP namespace. Let's make a request to the same API, which we do by calling the request method, passing in the method we want to use, in this case get, and the endpoint URL. This returns a response object, so we'll assign that to a variable. To get the response body, we call the getBody method on this object. This value will be an object, but we can cast it to a string to get the full response body as a string. If we run that, we get the same JSON data we've seen up to now. Instead of calling the request method and passing in the HTTP method as the first argument, there are shortcut methods like get, post, patch, and so on that will use that particular method in the request. If we run that again, we get the same result. Let's see how we make the patch request with request headers and request body. First, we'll change the method to patch. Then let's create the payload variable containing the request data. and an array of headers. Unlike curl, headers using Guzzle are defined in an array where the key is the header name and the value is the header value. To add these to the request, we add an array argument to the method call, specifying the request headers using the headers key and the request body using the body key. Let's run that, and we get the response as before. To get other details of the response, we can call various methods on the response object. For example, to get the status code, we call the getStatusCode method. This returns the status code as an integer. Headers can be accessed in a similar way. We can either get a list of all headers with the getHeaders method, or get an individual header using the getHeader method, passing in the header name. For example, let's get the content type header. When we run this, we get the JSON content type header printed out. Note, this is an array because technically there could be more than one header with the same name. As you can see, having request and response objects along with clearly named methods like this makes the code much more readable than the curl equivalent. Guzzle is simple to use but powerful, providing methods for all aspects of the request and response. The official documentation is comprehensive and very clear. So Guzzle is an object-oriented alternative to accessing APIs using PHP. Using the filegetContents function, curl and Guzzle all use HTTP requests to access an API directly. There is, however, another alternative to accessing some APIs, and that's to use a Software Development Kit, or SDK. An SDK is a set of pre-written components in a single installable package or library. In the context of APIs, an SDK is basically a tool that calls an API for you. It's a way to integrate an API into your application without having to call the API directly. Also, 
an SDK could include functionality for accessing more than one API, or just a limited part of an API. Not all APIs will have an SDK. It depends on the provider, and there's no standard structure for how an SDK works. You'll have to look at the documentation for each individual SDK. Consult the API vendor to see if there's an SDK available. For this example, we can't use the test API we've been using up to now, as it doesn't have an SDK. Instead, we're going to use Stripe, which is a service for managing online payments. They have a RESTful API, along with an SDK, so we can see how the two compare. We'll use the API and the SDK to create a new customer. Let's start with the API, using curl. In this script, we already have the basic curl code to make an API request to the endpoint for creating a new customer. We're sending the request body as a regular form post, so we're using the HTTP build query function to encode the payload. Note how we're not specifying the HTTP request method, as this is set automatically to post when we add some request data. This API requires authentication. So let's add a variable containing an API key. These keys can be generated in the Stripe account dashboard. This particular API requires the key to be passed using HTTP basic authentication, which we do using the user password option. In the Stripe dashboard, the list of customers for this account is currently empty. Let's run the script, and the response is some JSON that represents the new customer record. And in the list of customers, there's the new customer record created using the API. Now let's do the same thing using the SDK. First, let's install the SDK using Composer. Then in the code, let's comment out the curl code. We still need the API key and the customer data, but we'll change the customer data to differentiate it in the dashboard. Then, so the classes in the SDK are loaded automatically, we'll require Composer's autoloader, then we'll create a Stripe client object, passing in the API key as an argument. To create a new customer, we simply access the customer's property of this object, then call the create method on that, passing in the array of data. This returns an object that represents the new customer and we can just print that out using echo. Let's run that, and we get the new customer details printed out. In the list of customers, there's the new customer record, this time created using the SDK. As you can see, the SDK code is much simpler than the direct API call. So if an API has an SDK available, it will almost certainly be much easier to use than making direct calls to the API. So we've seen four different methods for calling an API from PHP. The file get contents function, curl, guzzle, and an SDK. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages, so which one you use will depend on the project, server environment, and if more than one of these methods is available, your personal preference. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel.
If there's a video you'd like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.